Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I want to thank Governor Lamont for highlighting this important piece of legislation, and I want to thank all of our uh, amazing Connecticut State Police who protect and serve our state every day. The recent tragedy in Buffalo makes this signing especially timely. Here in our state, we've seen a rise in racist incidents, uh, whether it's in Enfield or Suffield or in other communities, the Anti-Defamation League has noted a rise in these incidents, and we need real change and real action, uh, and there is no better time to act than now. This piece of legislation that we're signing today uh, requires the development of a reporting system, creating best practices and a model investigation policy for law enforcement units to use when these types of crimes are suspected. Our state will continue to lead and be a model once this law is signed. We want to be very clear that hate has no home in Connecticut, and the governor and I are gonna do everything we can to keep the people of Connecticut safe, and we want to inspire everyone to treat each other with dignity and respect. And we are very proud today to first introduce the leader of our Department of Public Safety, Commissioner Ravella. Commissioner. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, and thank you for coming today. It's an important day. Um, we look at the national trends of which Connecticut is not unique. We see the ripple effects um, nationally through our state. Today's bill signing um, gives us some more tools in that toolbox that we're able to use. It creates a statutory hate crimes unit for the Connecticut State Police. The investigation unit um, is already staffed and has been staffed with a sergeant and a couple of detectives that are already working diligently on different incidents around the state. <clears throat> the purpose, prevent and detection of criminal activity in regards to hate crimes. We're also going to have to uh, shore up our data collection and what we do with that data collection and dissemination not only locally but publicly. And we have to rely on our post counsel. Our post council is made up of chiefs, civilians, um, law enforcement experts from around the state that will contribute to not only a model policy, develop best practices, and it will also include our statewide advisory council on hate crimes, of which uh, some of those folks are here today. Amy, Judge, thank you for coming. Now, this idea was brought up by uh, Senator Amwa uh, a couple years ago, and uh, we actually were entirely on board with it. Uh, we saw the trends that were coming. Um, post George Floyd, we saw the um, uptick in African Americans, hate crime, and um, during COVID, we saw the uptick in Asian uh, hate crime. So, as as what happens nationally does ripple through us, but we don't just operate in a silo. Besides our hate crimes uh, advisory council, there's the AG's office, there's the FBI, there's the Justice Department, and now the state police and our local municipalities we were no longer going to operate in that uh, silo. So thank you very much for coming, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you very much. Commissioner, thank you so much uh, for having us. Um, in the aftermath of the George uh, Floyd murder, uh, our state formed a hate, cry, hate crimes advisory council, and we're very proud to have the co-chairs of that council come forward to say a few words. Amy Lynn Meyerson and Judge Doug Levine, if you would come up and say a few words, please. Thank you, Mr. Governor President and uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor Lamont. The Advisory Council is very pleased to have had the opportunity to work collaboratively with the legislature, the governor's office, and of course, uh, Commissioner Ravella and his office in law enforcement to continue to work to prevent hate crimes 
and also to combat them and find remedies for the victims of hate crimes. And in that vein, the council continues to research and explore different ways to improve the hate crimes reporting system and also the legislation to fight hate crimes. Um, and Judge Levine, did you want to speak yes, a little bit Thank you very there? much, and thank you, uh, Governor, and thank you, everyone who's here. Uh, the Hate Crimes Advisory Council has been hard at work since last August. We've broken down into subcommittees and to working groups of subcommittees. We are each studying various very important areas that relate to how to better investigate, prosecute, sentence, deal with uh, hate crimes on a variety of uh, levels. Uh, that is coming to fruition. We're now at the point where we are actually, each subcommittee is working on drafting recommendations which we will present to the legislature and to the governor uh, before October, which is when the stat a statute requires us to do that. We hope we're going to come up with a lot of creative and pragmatic ideas that will be acceptable to everybody because we absolutely want to take the lead in Connecticut uh, in this area, and I think we'll be able to do that with all the support we're getting from everybody. So thank you very, very much. Great. Thank you so much. Now my pleasure to bring up the two legislators that co-sponsored and spearheaded this initiative, uh, Senator Anwar and Representative Farrar. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Governor, Lieutenant Governor. Um, you know, I, I look forward to the day when we do not need a special unit for hate crimes. Uh, but. Unfortunately, right now we do, and and unfortunately the the ground realities are that the needs are going to increase and the efficiencies are going to be needed. This bill is a, a very big step in the right direction. Um, a, a couple of years ago, when I first proposed the legislation around creating this, um, the the recognition was that we have some of the finest. Um, officers within the state police. We have uh, the smartest people, the most hardworking people, and if we were to create a specialization and, and allow the individuals to be able to get specifically focused on prevention and identification and management of hate crimes, we would be able to create a model for the rest of the country to follow, and we are well on our way to be able to achieve that, and I'm so proud to be part of this family of people who want to protect each and every citizen of our state, and I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, following Senator Anwar's lead, and I just want to thank not only the Advisory Council, um, but Representative Horn's leadership and the Governor and Lieutenant Governor's leadership. I know for myself personally, this was a conversation in the last couple years that we would have around the dinner table. Um, I'm the wife of an Asian American, have Asian American family members, and particularly the rise in hate crimes against Asian Americans that we've seen in our country really has created an environment for so many, not just recently, but you can kind of look across history where people feel unsafe in their own community. And there's so many ways that as a state we've tried to take the lead, not just with this legislation, but with all of our efforts to ensure that our kids and students are receiving such a wealth of education as they grow about the diversity of our state. But today, I'm especially proud that we're signing a piece of legislation that will make sure that my family members, your family members, at the end of the day, know that Connecticut and our police officers are really there to protect us and to ensure that we can prevent these heinous crimes. So thank you again to the leadership and partnership, and I look forward to what comes forward from the Hate Crimes Advisory Council moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Farrar. It's now my pleasure to bring up the co-chair of the Legislature's Public Safety Committee, Maria Horn. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thank you to everyone here today for the sponsors of this, this legislation that we have been working on for the last couple of years. Um, I, I just want to emphasize how, first of all, how it, important the process has been here. We have had a lot of people 
uh, weighing in on how to get this through, proposing this legislation from the outset, the Hate Crimes Advisory Council, which has been an integral part of making sure it got through, and also, of course, the commissioner and, and law enforcement throughout the state of Connecticut, because this legislation is going to help create a really important resource for every officer in, throughout the state, and as others have emphasized, both in prevention and investigation of these crimes. And, and it's part of that process that have, has bought, brought all of those pieces together that's going to make it really useful and impactful every day. And I want to emphasize that, that although it took us a couple years to, to get it done, uh, the, you know, it's the, the vote counts were strongly bipartisan when we got it done. So I think you know, sometimes taking a little bit of time means that people now understand how important this is and what an important you know, impact it's going to have on the people of the state of Connecticut. So um, I, I echo everyone else in, in all the hard work and, and really happy to be here signing this today. Thank you so much, uh, Representative Horn. It's my pleasure to uh, bring up uh, Representative Jerry Reyes, who is speaking on behalf of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus. Thank Representative. You. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor and privilege to be here. I'm the chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, and uh, this piece of legislation is as important as anything that we worked on in the last 10 years, in my estimation. People need to feel comfortable and be able to know that they can advocate and be able to uh, have a place in, uh, where their voice will be heard. And I want to thank the leadership of public safety and the governor and the commission for the work that they've done. This is a, uh, a, an important piece of legislation that many communities that, that look like I do and, and, um, and feel that there are times when the, their voices go uh, silent, uh, that there is going to be now a resource to be able to do and look into these things. And I'm a firm believer in what gets measured gets uh, what gets measured gets actually held accountable. And this is just as good as anything we've done when it comes to equity and accountability. And I want to thank the leadership of the state of Connecticut and to the chairs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Reyes. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce the fearless leader of our state, Governor Ned Lamont. I think we all thought this was particularly important now, two and a half years uh, of COVID hell and how that impacted uh, different segments of our communities uh, and how it unleashed some demons. And um, that includes uh, you know, the racist backed attacks that are what we call our hate crimes. And I didn't always understand why you needed a special unit for hate crimes, as, as Saad said. But beginning to see there are a lot of tells, a lot of tells for these folks, you know, online, a lot of tells in terms of the greater community. And I'd like to think one of the things we're doing with this special unit is being better at being able to anticipate these things, look online, see we, how we can head this off. And it's part of a bigger effort we've got, um, you know, Susan and I, more broadly in terms of mental health and doing everything we can in a preventative way to make sure we get these kids or these other older people before they do real damage. And the nature of a hate crime is particularly severe. Um, let's sign the bill. Shall we sign the bill? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I know, I would love it. <laughs> Thank you. 
I guess we will now take any questions that you might have for all of these experts. Well, maybe the commissioner can tell us what, what the, what's this unit been doing and how is this the passage of this legislation going to in any way uh, broaden or expand its, uh, its mission, its uh, work? Well, first of all, um, the hate crime unit was formed uh, Back in October, um, we took the initiative. So my job is to look out past the horizon uh, for the state of Connecticut. Um, they've been busy with um, communicating with the Anti-Defamation League. They've also investigated numerous complaints, and they're aware of these complaints that have come in. When you have a hate crime, um, those hate words affect entire cultures. Um, so they've been out, they've been very busy. Um, they've met with the FBI, um, they've talked with other groups out there. So that is their first steps in um, getting this done. In, go ahead. I, I think that you have an intelligence unit too. So what, what sort of uh, collaboration is there gonna be between you know, your intelligence unit and, and, and the state crime unit? Or well, what is the level? Yeah, they work right out of the intelligence units uh, with the, um, what we call as the watch center that um, actually, uh, coordinates all the intelligence that uh, passes through the state of Connecticut, the analyzation of that uh, intelligence and the uh, sending it out. So they're all coordinated. Commissioner, um, after Buffalo happened, mm -hmm. there were so many red flags. The governor mentioned that, you know, so many online postings, so many, you know, visits to gun and ammunition stores in his own hometown. Um, how is what you guys are doing here going to help you guys spot people like that. So when I talk about silos, um, my job is to eliminate those silos, not only in the state police, um, but with local law enforcement and our federal partners, right? Everybody needs to come to the table and talk. This unit's connected not only with the, the violent crimes task forces, uh, they're connected with the, the new gun task force uh, that the governor formed. Um, they're gonna be connected um, and share information uh, globally. Um, as you know, emergency management and homeland security is also um, the administer of uh, the, the school grants for security and also for the nonprofits and for the houses of worship and for the interoperability. All those folks are, are connected and they'll be connected through um, the Connecticut State Police. And with that is the dissemination to local law enforcement and getting information from local law enforcement. I mean, it seems like so much of this is online now. Um, how, how do you guys track that? And is there, you know, is there a point where you, know, you can't track anymore because you're violating people's civil liberties? Right, so you're referring to the fine line between uh, freedom of speech and uh, either <clears throat> aspirational folks who become operational in a moment's notice, um, such as the, uh, the man in Buffalo, correct? Um, when I say <clears throat> aspirational, he wrote his manifesto, he planned, and at one point he became operational uh, to actually commit the crime. So um, some of these folks are extremely detectable, um, and that's what our aim is here. Uh, Governor, could you explain maybe why, you know, you thought, you, I believe you said you weren't certain that such a unit was, was needed here. So maybe you could explain to us what your, what your thinking was then, and and how it's progressed to the point where you're, you're signing, you would sign this bill. I, I think these crimes um, are committed by a somewhat unique breed of cat. Um, as they often leave their digital fingerprints and have a, a different way of um, uh, shouting from the rooftops. And, you know, James and the team 
just gave me the insights or the feeling that um, a special unit can work across all the different silos, work across the region and track down this virus called racism, and they leave a lot of telltales right all over the internet. But, I mean, did you, you, you said earlier you weren't sure it was, it was me. Why, why what, was, what was your thought at, at that point? Why, why, why I think over the last few years, I see a lot more uh, hate crimes, explicitly hate crimes. Shattered from the rafters hate crimes. I think, uh, it's either more severe now than it was uh, pre-COVID, or I'm just paying a lot more attention. And uh, Senator Anwar uh, put out a release earlier today, and I'll have a question for you soon, too, uh, about uh, the bond condition, $5 million for security for houses of worship. Yeah, we're going to uh, get that passed. Uh, can, you, can you sort of go into detail about what that money is spent to go towards, Governor? Uh, um, I'll start. Uh, we did this, uh, I think it was a year ago as well, and uh, this is extra security for not-for-profits, including uh, religious institutions. Uh, why these groups? Because these are the uh, houses of worship in particular that seem to be particularly targeted. We see that in terms of online tells and other things. So in order to give um, everybody confidence and security that you can go to the mosque, you can go to temple, you can go to the house of worship safely, this is some of the um, things you wanted to do. That could be everything from monitoring cameras, um, so they're tracing. And uh, Senator Anwar, uh, Representative Reyes, Representative Horn, um, you know, we've seen units created, we've seen units funded, and then we've seen funding go away, and sort of units, uh, not atrophy, but sort of uh, temporarily shelved. What, what, what's, what commitment, uh, you know, how, is this a sustainable commitment to this, this, this uh, endeavor? Of More well, I can share with you that um, I hope that we come to a point that we don't need a unit like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, we have uh, a ma major challenge in our country. Um, there is online radicalization happening. And, and this is being done at such a level that uh, we may not even be able to even measure it. But uh, we are seeing lone wolves, but we are seeing organized groups. We have been seeing a significant uptick in, in uh, hate uh, uh, messaging and, and um, hate words. Um, if you look at the data from Anti-Defamation League or other organizations, you will see that there is a very significant hate communications that are happening. Unfortunately, the hate communications uh, are tracked with hate actions as well. Um, and, and, and well, everybody who has hate speech does not necessarily go and hurt individuals, but a certain percentage starts to move in that direction. And as of right now, it looks like uh, this unit is very much needed. And let's hope that as a country, as a society, we move in an inclusive environment that we will not need to require something like this. And I look forward to that day, but until then, I think it's going to be needed, and I'm hopeful that uh, we will work on ways to eliminate the, the pathways to hatred and pathways to hate crimes. So I would echo what Senator Anwar just said in terms of the need being obvious and great. You know, every, pretty much every week, every month, we get a new national report about the extent uh, of, of, you know, the increase in hate crimes. And, and in particular, you know, these crimes are among the most corrosive ones we have because they go after the the bonds that tie us together as communities and as a state and and so i think the need is is obvious and i think the fact that it's you know to your point question about whether it's sustainable the fact that you know the commissioner has already begun this work in fact he began it before the bill passed so so we are we are aligning both the clear need that's being made clear by you know newspaper headlines and, and data that's coming out in reams, and also the work that has already begun um, to back that up. So I think that, that you know, those two things coming together and aligning everybody and making sure that everyone is on board with understanding the dramatic need here, I think we do have hope to sustain it. I certainly will continue to be looking at and talking to the commissioner about you know, staffing needs or, or what they need in the future. Certainly we're paying attention to that to uh, the police force, you know, statewide in any event, so. And Representative Brave, can you explain to us why this was a, a priority for the Black Puerto Rican Caucus? Thank you for the question, Mr. Hughes. The, any time that we get a chance to legislate, any time we get a chance to legislate any bill that will make the, the playing field even and equitable for all, 
and have a place where you could actually go and actually complain if you need to. I think that I think that uh, Commissioner Ravello starting this before the bill was even signed. I think is a, a sign indicative of the times that we live in, and I believe that at, at the state of Connecticut is being proactive in doing this. Uh, we don't need to see another situation like Buffalo here. We know what we're we know that the that evils out there. We know that hate crimes are out there. Uh, we live in a very very technical world, and in my estimation, the gentlemen and ladies that work here and with this information, they know so much more than we know. And if they're concerned, I'm ultra concerned because I know that I don't even know. I barely know the tip of what's really going on when it comes to hate crimes. So imagine what we don't know. So this unit is needed more than ever now. And I and it's it, it's a, Mr. Hughes is very simply put, it's about making sure that we address it. It's out there, and that we stop it. And Paul, can I just say, yes, as long as the governor and I are in charge, you have our commitment mm -hmm. to use whatever resources are at our disposal to combat hate in our state. In what way will state police and this unit work with local law enforcement? You know, it, it, it spelled out, I guess, in this legislation. There's a couple facets to that. Um, it is spelled out in the legislation uh, in regards to post council. Uh, and the representative post council formulating a standardized uh, policy and procedure for local law enforcement. It also connects us even more with the 14-day requirement um, to receive the um, hate crimes from the local law enforcement. Um, that gives us an opportunity to develop pen, patterns, patterns and trends um, that we can uh, do something about. Thank you, Commissioner. Sure. While you're up there, can, for folks at home, can you just kind of run us through a real-world scenario, something that a local department might get their eye on and kind of explain what the process will be once that happens. Okay, let me uh, take one that's uh, already out there, Sergeant. Um, and I hope I don't interfere with anything. Um, there was a blanketing of um, uh, flyers. There was a blanketing of uh, stickers in certain locations um, that has now become connected to, to a group that's popped up in different jurisdictions. So uh, the hate crimes unit has already been aware of that. Um, they began connecting local law enforcement. Um, there's been an advisement uh, on uh, CTIC, which is the fusion center for the state of Connecticut, and there's only about 80 of those in the country, and they're in charge of the intelligence. So um, everyone is connected. Um, watching if it becomes more um, than inspirational. So how, how do you monitor that? Be a little more precise. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. That, I mean, so I mean, so so you're 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 aware of the groups. You're aware of the flyers and the stickers. And, and, and at this point, what is the fusion center? What does the division do to try to, I guess, monitor the group, see if if there's another threat upcoming? Well, it, there is no threat identified from this group yet, um, and monitoring is just nothing more than observing the incidents that occur. Um, we're not digging into the people that uh, are part of this group, and right now it's a freedom of speech incident, um, unless somebody wants to press charges and say it's a criminal mischief. But right now, that's not the case. So at this point, you wouldn't, say, monitor their online activities or anything like that? Not at all, no. Do local law enforcement in a certain way as well? Post Council may decide that there should be a training component to this also. Yes. So that's in the future. Anybody else? Thanks everyone for coming. We appreciate it.